You're good to go. All right, we'll start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the, to the flag of the United, United, of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next item is um, for any opening remarks for the superintendent or the town manager, if you have any. I'd say um, have, have uh, Derek go first. He has any? Thank you, John. Uh, just continuing on with the process, we met um, two times this last week, uh, last week, Wednesday and Thursday. Um, I think they were very productive meetings. Uh, the, um, you know, the, the Wednesday meeting was more of kind of the nuts and bolts type um, uh, things within the project. And uh, Thursday was more the creative side it was the um, we talked about, you know, colors and uh, themes for the building. And um, I think there's some real uh, exciting things that are going to be, you know, talked about here uh, tonight in, in regard to that. There was uh, both meetings were very productive, very different, but very productive. Uh, and just thank you to all those folks that did participate in those uh, last week. And I really feel um, uh, really good and positive after uh, last Thursday's meeting in, in regards to um, seeing that uh, we have, you know, um, in, in regards to this uh, uh, building and uh, in the memory of Mr. Mitchell. So um, with that being said, thank you for those folks who uh, participated and thank you to Shane and folks from RDA. All right, thanks. Mr. Dutton, did you have anything? John, I don't have uh, anything for this evening. All right, great, thank you. Okay, I guess we'll move on to, uh, to the OPM update. Okay, thank you, John. Um, Share my screen. Can I share it, Josh? Yep, my co host. Okay, so um, just our, our standard update. We, we gave a little update last week with some more information uh, this week. Um, so, just the uh, progress report since last week, we did get our, our demolition bids back on, on Wednesday of last week. So I'll go through those in a couple of minutes, but they were uh, they were very good bids, and uh, I think we'll be able to make a recommendation tonight on that. Uh, as Derek said, we we continue to meet in the uh, in the working group to uh, to refine and progress the design, uh, and we are into the 60% construction documents. Uh, so after tonight's meeting, we're going to look to uh, to send those 60% construction documents to the estimators. Uh, probably by the end of end of this week, give them two weeks to do their 60% construction estimates, another week to reconcile that, and, and we'll be back in early June with the, uh, with the results of that 60% CD estimate. So uh, things are progressing well, and uh, we should be able to do that. Um, schedule milestones. Again, the bids came in on, uh, on Wednesday. We, we reviewed those and we'll make a recommendation in a moment. Uh, once we make a recommendation, if, if you guys approve it, we, uh, we send a contract to the uh, apparent low bidder. They have 10 days in which to, uh, to execute that contract, send it back with their bond and insurances, and then we can uh, issue a notice to proceed. So we're hoping to, uh, to do that and issue a notice to proceed sometime around May 19th. Uh, and then the job would, would go, the demo job would go uh, through the summer and be finished by the end of August. Um, as I said, 60% construction documents, we're continuing with those. Uh, we'll get the 60% uh, the pricing documents to the estimators at the end of this week, give them uh, about three weeks to do their estimates and, and then we have that reconciliation meeting uh, and we will uh, come back to you guys on June 1st, I think, with the, uh, with the construction estimates and look to submit the 60% documents to MSBA on June 5th, so about a month from now. Uh, we'll move straight into construction, 90% uh, CDs then. That will take us through June, July, and August. Uh, we have another submission to, to MSBA at the end of the 90% CD set. Um, after that, we'll wrap up the 100% construction documents or the bid documents, uh, at which time we'll send them out to general contractors uh, in October to, to bid 
take a couple of months for those guys to to bid the documents um for us to review those and to come back with a recommendation and award and then construction to start sometime late 2020. Uh, upcoming meetings. So we're we're here tonight. We're going to go through some uh, some of the uh, the revised floor plans, the exterior elevations, and talk about the demo contract. Uh, the next meeting I had was was June first. We we talked about perhaps meeting on on May eighteenth. Uh, I'm not sure we need to, but we can we can maybe talk about that in a few minutes, John. Whether it's something that that you folks want to see between now and. Uh, in June when we submit the 60% documents to MSBA. Um, but right now we, we think the next meeting uh, will be June 1st. And we have a couple more meetings through June. Uh, it'll be every other week, the 15th, the 29th, and then July 13th for uh, the next meetings. Um, this is our updated uh, construction budget. Uh, I did send out the, uh, the more detailed one. I have it here. Uh, Again, this is uh, our standard um, monthly budget update. It, it, um, it's based on the MSBA 3011, which is the MSBA project funding agreement uh, budget worksheet. Going down through it, um, under, under the feasibility study, we obviously finished the feasibility study, but that's still included in our overall budget. We have admin. Uh, the only expenses that we've incurred under, under admin to date are the OPM fees. So you can see what's been uh, paid to date in this column here what the balance is. So today through the, uh, the detailed design, uh, the OPM has built um, $142,200. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, uh, the architect and engineering, their basic service through uh, the DD and construction documents to date, they've built just over uh, 1.6 million for basic services. And then there's some other reimbursable services that they've bill been billing against that are recorded here. So the architect and his team have billed 1.66 million to date uh, out of their basic service and, and uh, additional services. Um, and then the only other change from, from last month, we or last week, we, we did approve that amendment, amendment number two for RDA. So we've, we've taken that out of the owner's contingency here. You can see that the contingency was reduced from uh, $490,000 to, to $410,000 um, to, to um, to reflect that amendment that we approved last month, uh, and uh, that's been carried up back up into the uh, into the architect's uh, fees up here, so we can see that. Um, but our current budget, our budget that that we're um, going to stay to, is this eighty point six million dollars. We've uh, we've paid invoices totaling just under two point five million dollars. We've submitted all those to MSBA. To date, MSBA has reimbursed the uh, the district just over a million dollars, and uh, this is actually incorrect. Uh, propane number ten is has been submitted to MSBA and is under review. That, that, that's wrong there. Um, the second page, somebody had asked, are we going to track the uh, the contingency expenditures? So this is um, what we do Shane. to track the. Shane, sorry, Kathy Blaze's question, Kathy. Yeah. Yeah, I just, could you talk a little bit about the feasibility study and the balance? Because I think the last meeting you said we we wouldn't get reimbursed if we use that to cover the additional items from the last time. So Correct. can you just talk a little bit about that and how we might or might not be able to use it? So so when we get when we get bids in in uh, November, December of this year, we, we do what's called a, a bid amendment with MSBA. So right now you can see the uh, the project budget is based on the the project funding agreement in in November of 2019, uh, when the uh, when the project was was um, was approved. Um, I thought the bid amendment when we get the bids in in November we'll do a bid amendment and that will reset this column, so we'll be able to draw any of the remaining funds from. From the feasibility study, we'll be able to put those down in, in our contingency or wherever we want to put those. Uh, the reason we didn't want to bill those against the amendment this month is because that money was in the feasibility agreement. If, if we build it using the funds from the feasibility agreement after the, the feasibility and the schematic was done, uh, it, it would not be reimbursable by MSBA. But by waiting for the funding or the, the bid amendment, 
we can put it in our uh, in our contingency and and th those funds might be reimbursable then if, if they're approved by MSPA but right now if we if we uh, took took them out of uh, feasibility they wouldn't be reimbursed okay Does that answer you? Thank you. Um, in the second page, I said, so this shows, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to, to update this every month now moving forward. This shows the, uh, the contingency expenditures. So we have that owner's construction contingency, which was the $490,000. And uh, last week we, we and, approved. Sorry, Shane, we're not seeing what you're we're still looking at slides. I don't know if that's what you're still looking at or if you're pulling up that more detailed. Uh, sorry guys, let me go back. I changed to... I think you're talking about the more detail, yeah. but I wanted to... So, so sorry, yeah, so this is the, I beg your pardon, this is the, um, the detailed budget I just went through. So, so that $98,000 there, Kathy, that would be that would be brought down below the line when we when we do the PFA bid amendment after we get bids in in November of 2020. So we'll be able to bring that down into our contingency and hopefully that will be reimbursable later on. Um, so sorry guys, uh, uh, um, but this is the detailed budget that went out to everybody. Uh, as I said, the OPM fees and the architect's fees are the only things that we've spent against this to date. Uh, down below there, we, we show the, the reduction in the contingency for RDA's amendment. Uh, the budget will always be 80.6 million. Uh, and we show what's, what's been committed to date, what's been spent to date in the balance. And as I said, um, MSBA is, we've submitted 2.5 million to MSBA. They've reimbursed just over a million and they're reviewing propay number 10 at the moment. So hopefully we should get funded for that in a few weeks. Um, this is our contingency expenditure log. So it's the owner's construction contingency of the 490. We, uh, we take out the RDA amendment for the, the surveying wetlands and permitting that we approved last week, reduce that contingency. So that's the 410, 419, which you see back up here uh, under the, uh, the owner's contingency, the balance of that. So we'll track that all through the project. We'll always be able to see where we are tracking with, with the owner's contingency and down below here we have a uh, construction contingency of uh, three and a quarter million. Once construction starts, we'll, we'll, we'll track those and any expenditures from construction contingency and that balance will always go, go back up here. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to track that throughout the project. Um, so any questions, sorry, apologies. I thought I was on this detail. Any, any questions on the details uh, budget? And on the contingency log. So we'll continue to update those each, each month. Uh, back to my, uh, my presentation. Uh, as I said, we've, we've, re we've been reimbursed a million dollars. Number two is under review from MSBA. Uh, then I, I know it comes up later, John, on the, on the agenda, the, um, the demolition bids, I don't know if you want to talk to them now or we can come back to this when, when the, uh, the item appears on the agenda. Um, why don't you give us the overview of it? You know, we'll have to bring it up again, yeah. of course, okay. follow the agenda. Sure, so, so we, we received bids last Wednesday. Um, we received them electronically, which is, uh, which is actually pretty, pretty common now. It's something that's been, been going on in the industry for a couple of years. Uh, instead, of, instead of opening them live uh, at town hall or wherever else you, you might decide to do that with the contractors present, we, we have them submitted electronically to the, uh, to the printer and the reprographic uh, company. So we got those on, on Thursday. Uh, Bid Docs Online are the company we use, so that's actually, it's, it's public, so anybody can go and, and look at the detailed bids if they want. Um, but I've just summarized the, uh, the bid results that we got. So we got 12 bids in, which was, uh, which was pretty, pretty responsive. Um, you can see JR Vinagro was the lowest at 563 million. Uh, second, third, and fourth were, were pretty closely bunched at, at 746, 747, and 774. Uh, and then it went down the list to, uh, to the, the ninth guy who was just under a million dollars. 
So our, our budget for this was actually 1.25 million. So we're, we're well within budget. Um, I will note that the, the demo bids that we received, we are, we are not taking out the slab on grade. That is the, the ground floor slab at the moment. Um, we're not doing that because we want, to, we want to protect the site against any erosion control and, and any runoff into the, uh, into the perennial stream there or any of the wetlands. So we're not going to take out the slab. So that, that, um, that, 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 that's one of the reasons we're under budget, but certainly not, not by 700,000 or so. So um, overall, these are, these are excellent uh, bid results. You can see they were pretty competitive. Uh, the low guy is a little bit lower than, than the second guy. Um, but um, all in all, we're, we're, we're in a very good position here. Um, so JR Vinagro, uh, they also submit what's called a certificate of eligibility. This is the, the state certificate they get that, um, that allows them to bid on, on public projects. So we looked at that and some of the other documents that they, uh, they submitted with their bid. Um, the certificate of eligibility is based on 20 projects that they've been evaluated on. At the end of all public projects, we're required to send a, an evaluation of the contractor into DCAM. That goes on their file with the state. And, uh, and that um, is what their, uh, their eligibility is, is based on for, for future bidding projects. So Vinagro's um, average evaluation is 95 out of 100 for those 20 projects. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, anything over, over 90 is a, uh, is a good evaluation. Um, they have zero evaluations under 80. On, under the state system, uh, 80 is the passing mark. So if you, if you get a 79 or lower, you, you are deemed to have failed your evaluation. And two evaluations uh, in a 12 month period will mean you're removed from the, uh, the state bid list or the, uh, you're, you're not allowed to bid on any state contract. So, Finagra have never um, gotten an evaluation as a uh, failing grade or only 80 points. Um, the certificate of eligibility also limits, shows the limits of a single project and an aggregate project limit. So, so Finagra's single project limit, that is the, uh, the most expensive single project that they're allowed to work on for the state is uh, 11.5 million. And their aggregate, that's the total of all their projects ongoing at any one time is 50 million. Um, so obviously the, the single project limit is well under or well over what our bid is and we checked and uh, if they're awarded the, uh, the demolition bid for Bridgewater, they will still be under their, their aggregate uh, project limit for the state. Um, Dennis Budgets, we, we've worked with Vinagra before. Uh, most recently they, they did the demolition of the, the Sharon Town Hall, which was on an occupied site. We had, we had built a new town hall in, in, a, uh, in the parking lot open that up, move the folks into that and demolish the old one right beside it. Uh, it was a pretty complicated job on, on a confined site and, and they, uh, they did an excellent job on that. So we have uh, experience with them and, uh, and we, um, we've had very good luck with them in the past. Uh, so, Shane? Uh, yep. Um, we also have worked with them in the past. Um, they tore down the barn that was over at the high school uh -huh. and okay. they did a good job and they were you know, relatively under budget from what I recall. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I didn't see that one. They did list a, a number of projects on, on, their, um, on their bid, but I, I, I didn't see that one. Um, so, so based on our, our review of their bid, and um, we, we, we find them to be a, an eligible and responsive bidder, and uh, we recommend that we, we award the demo contract to them uh, based on their bid of $583,000. Is it 83 or 63? Uh, yeah. The slide before said 63, Shane. I just wanted to, I was going to add that thing. Um, it's, sorry, it's five, 583. Uh, here's the, can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah, so yep. it's, uh, 583 is, is the bid result, sorry. So, <clears throat> Shane, um, so the low is 75% of the next low, is that, uh, you know, that's not of any concern or how do you reconcile that? Um, it's, it's not, I, I did reach out to them on, on Friday, John, just to, to make sure they, they would stand over their bid because it is, it is a big gap to, to, you know, two, three and four pretty closely bunched together. Uh, I, I, I didn't get a hold of them and, you know, but usually at, at this point they would, they would know 
uh, what the other bid results are and, and they would have reached out to us if they were concerned with that. So I haven't heard from them. Um, so, may, you know, maybe they just, they, they, they need the work and, and they can do it for this, but they haven't indicated that, uh, that they're going to withdraw their bid. Okay. Um, as part of that uh, evaluation process, does um, RDA have any uh, input? I know Gene, I saw Gene and Mike on. Did, uh, do they have an opinion about this being low? Um, we were curious because the other ones seemed to be so grouped together, but based on Shane's you know, report, and Kathy's that um, they have such good ratings, uh, they haven't reached back to them, and then you guys had good experience with them. Um, you know, we're comfortable making the award. If uh, the worst case is you make an award to them and they say, oops, <laughs> but they haven't done that yet. So I'd, I'd be right there with, uh, with Shane. Okay. I had one more question, then I'll open it, you know, anybody else. Uh, the, um, wh what is the value of the slab that's not being, that was included in the estimate, the budget? So I'm, I'm just trying to find out what was our budgeted amount for the actual work we issued. Was it closer to a million, was it? Um, I mean, pro yeah, probably 100 to 150,000. Um, really when, when, the demolition is a hard trade to, uh, to to estimate, and usually they they you know they simply do it as a, a cubic foot of the building, um, and then they'll, they'll add on any other kind of you know abnormal costs that they may have might have to include in there. So you know our budget was based on taking a I think it's 132,000 square feet by whatever the height of that building is. And then there was a couple of other things in there. Um, so I, I would say the slab is probably 100 to 150,000 of that. Okay, so our, our corresponding budget would be about 1.1 million as opposed to 1.25 million then. Correct, yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions on this uh, before we go back to it uh, later in the agenda? John, I... <clears throat> Can I just ask a question? It's Pat. Sure. So if if we're not going to meet for another month and this um, first winning bidder does withdraw, <clears throat> should, when, when somebody makes a motion, should we make a motion to accept the first bid? But if they're unsuccessful in negotiations, they can move on to the second or or do we have to have another meeting? Um, it's a good question. I guess, I guess it's up to the, 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 the committee and the chair. Um, you know, I, I, I don't expect them to, to, to withdraw if they haven't at this point. They've had, you know, three, three days now, three working days. Um, but but you depend on the wording of the motion. Uh, that. No, yeah, I mean, personally, I don't like... I'm fine. I'm fine with that. That's fine. Just just going with the first one. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a good question, Pat. I I don't like conditional, um, you know, approvals or motions, but um, I guess if that happens, we maybe we have time to schedule the meeting, and you know, in terms of the open meeting law and the public notice and we could react to it so we don't lose too much time. But um, good question. I have a question too. This is Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Um, so the slab cost that 100 to 150, where does that does that come back to us later? Yeah, that, that will be part of the, the general contractor's uh, bid when he submits that in, uh, in November. Okay, thank you. Um, so, so part of the strategy there too was that um, we, 
we need to, um, there's some fill on this site when we, when we come to build a new building. So we're thinking that, you know, it might even save the, the general contractor some money if he, if he demolishes that, that slab, but he can reuse that concrete as some of the fill uh, to bring up the grades on the site also. So, um, you know, we, we, we thought it made sense to, to leave it in his, his scope. Thank you. Okay. Um, if there aren't any questions, I guess we could move on and then we're going to revisit this to take a vote um, later so we can ask any new questions that come up at that point. Uh, so that's all I had, uh, John. All right, thank you. So, Gene uh, and Jeff, uh, it's on to you. I think I just lost Gene, who was supposed to start it. But um, uh, what we did do, uh, I'll speak to the uh, the Thursday meeting um, that we had, and uh, but I'll, well, let's start off with the, the Wednesday meeting. What we did there was we also we hit some. Uh, of the media center uh, layouts uh, and, you know, actually went through the program. And this time, you know, uh, we had Dennis there, Lil and, and Lisa, and they had some good contribution to it. Um, and we improved the design a little bit there. Uh, we had a, a story time area um, that um, went from bean bags to actually some some level of fixed seating uh some really good ideas about that here gene's back on good uh there you go and um what we also talked about is is that if you see in that uh picture in the center there there's that the uh, the actual uh bookcases as we call them uh were you know even though they show to be uh you know organized in a way that they kept their on wheels and they can be moved in any single way. It was uh, part of the review was to be flexible in the space. Uh, we do have um, a teaching wall type of uh, type classroom area where we have in the classroom, the teaching wall with, a, I think it's a 12 foot or 14 foot marker board with tack boards both sides. It's pretty much typical of what are in the classrooms. Uh, the tables and chairs, they can move, be moved to the front uh, in the, of the, uh, the teaching surface. And so you could actually have a classroom layout. Um, those were the big picture items that were in there. Uh, the other item that was actually out there was uh, that the ELS space, the extended learning space outside, uh, um, you know, they, they, they talked as if, well, at one time, let's put a bench in there. And then it was decided, uh, let's don't do that, I believe. Is that correct, Gene? Yeah, um, a couple of things came up. We, we had half-height lockers here, and someone asked us whether uh, we needed them. And so we did do a, um, a count, um, I think Thursday or Friday, and we figured out that, in fact, we do, we do need the space for lockers. But... Even if we didn't, um, what they, what Dennis and and Lil and Lisa had thought was, it would be really neat to have these um, carpeted risers, you know, kind of like bleachers except they're with uh, with carpet on them. And um, if we were, if we, they thought instead of doing them out here in the hallway, it would be kind of cool if they were on wheels and we could set them up uh, back in this area because we have this nice bay for a story time. So really everything you're seeing here, except for the yellow, which is a built-in cabinet, is movable and flexible. Um, Shane, Shane suggested that we put some floor outlets up in here for, um, for computers. Um, but again, you know, they're in the floor. So if you want to use this space for something else, you just simply move the, move the tables and the computers. Um, so we're in the process um, for the CD60 estimate this week. We're just 
We're just kind of going to elevate this room and show the cabinets and show the teaching areas. But um, I mean, I'll echo what Jeff said. What every time we go through this, these working groups, it's great ideas come out. So you guys have a good, you have good rep representation, you know, kind of looking out for the way the school works. If does anyone have any questions about the, the media center or suggestions? And if not, I can just, uh, the other space that we showed and it's still a work in process. Um, we showed kind of, this is a, a work room kind of staff dining room that we had done on another school a few years ago. And again, all the tables are on wheels. It's just one big wide open space. And you can see we have, well, in here, there's supposed to be a fridge. So there's kind of a, a dining area and then a work room. Uh, and we thought we would show a, uh, a folding partition, but um, as part of the working group, we, you know, they decided that they really didn't need, need that. So, um, I can't remember if I'm repeating this to the building committee. I don't think so. But, you know, we ended up taking this folding partition out, uh, making it one big room. Part of it will be kind of staff dining and we're sizing it so that it can um, have all the pre-kindergarten staff at once because they have a limited time. They won't go down to the, uh, to the calf. They'll, they'll, um, eat by themselves in between the morning and afternoon sessions. And we talked about the machinery that would be in the workroom and how best to lay that out. So we're kind of in the process of, of drawing up, you know, cabinets and uh, appliances for the, um, for the staff dining room. So I won't go on and on about all these, all these details, but those are the two areas we covered with the working group last week. And again, um, I mean, I, I always think it's great because the, the way we had it on paper ends up getting changed. And to me, that's a good thing. You know, it makes the school better for, for the way you're going to use it. I have a question. This is Joe. Sure, Joe. Um, I'm sorry, my, my mute didn't go quickly as you went on to the, this one. If you can back up to the uh, media center, sure. please. See if it's still there. Sorry about that. that. Where is that little devil? <laughs> Really, my, my question goes back to uh, the kids with uh, physical mobility challenges and so forth and the consideration for some of this um, furniture that you're looking into is how adaptive um, are, is the furniture or other things that you're considering to add it so kids will feel inclusive? Um, it all will be. Um, and I think as Shane has kind of reminded me over and over again, it's nice to see the furniture so you can lay out the room. but we're really not bidding that until maybe a year from now. Okay. <laughs> so Very we'll go through a whole design process with the furniture. It's a whole separate bid. Excellent. And that was similar then to the, uh, that the next um, one that you just showed about the faculty lounge and such that sometimes I've been in school districts whereby there are teachers or staff that are, have mobility impairments in that might be in wheelchairs wow. and so forth. Just that um, to be feeling inclusive that tables or desks are able to fit you're able to fit certain things underneath that as opposed to being on the side. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think pretty much all the manufacturers at this point know, you know, they got to work around, not work around, they just have to accommodate um, right. the ADA regulations. Great. All right. Thank you. So, um, so the other thing that we've done, and, so, and, and I'm going to keep this really uh, brief is... Uh, we've gone through, this is part of our, what we have to do for the, again, for the MSBA, but we've taken every space within the building here and we've drawn little lines around it. And then the computer has calculated how much square footage, you know, how much square footage in the library, how much in the, uh, the stairwell, how much in the elevator, how much in this classroom. So uh, we've done that on all three floors and um, I'm, kind of on the verge of sending Shane uh, the, for his review, the um, space summary, which is a spreadsheet that we've been working with since feasibility study. But uh, it, it, it shows every room, it shows what's in Mitchell, where you are, what's, or where it was, what's in the Mitchell at the middle, 
what's in this CD60 submission and how it compares to the um, MSBA standards. And there are, I'm not going to go through it, but there's, remember in the, um, the staff dining room, we, we um, reduced that. We added some square footage, you know, in the custodial area. So we saved or we brought the staff dining uh, 215 square feet uh, closer to where it was when we submitted um, for the feasibility study uh, and the schematics. And then we we're also going to uh, show MSBA that we've pulled the uh, medical the nurse's office back into where it was at the end of schematic design. So um, they should they should appreciate both of those um, changes. We're also um, Shane. We're still well under the 1.25 net to gross uh, multiplier. So. All in all, it's an improvement on where we were at DD. I think that's, you know, I mean, as I, as I told the working group, we're really kind of into working on the nitty gritty at this point, um, trying, to, trying to pull together all the blueprints for the, for the estimators. So um, that's my short report on the other stuff that we've been doing. Okay. I'll stop sharing my screen unless there's any questions. So there are a few other items on the agenda. Is Jeff going to go over those or, or is I that it, go, Gene? I can, I can go in a large picture format. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sounds good. In, and not get into uh, drains from last week. Uh, <laughs> Only if they're stainless steel. <laughs> well, they were brass, um, <laughs> chrome plated at top. Uh, I reviewed both the uh, uh, the HVAC uh, finished products and actually some of the uh, working elements such as roof fans, um, grills, those type things uh, with uh, Bob Chico. Uh, we also reviewed in the fire protection and the elements, just basically more drains in a matter of fact, but you know, like the back flow preventer and those type things. Uh, there was a question, for exa example, was uh, the exhaust fans that they were direct drive versus uh, belt driven on the, on the roof. And so, you know, those are the type of questions that Bob had asked about. And, he seemed to fe uh, feel that he was pretty comfortable with those. I'm not speaking for him. He's here. But uh, um, that was the big picture is uh, that you would see that if we wanted to show the slides, they were all drains, if you wanted to say. So I think we've kept it to a minimum. We were, uh, we did review with Bob. I still have elements that we have to in my notes that we have to hit and one of them is uh, bathroom accessories but uh, that's um, you know and then also the other one was uh, the mobile partitions the uh, we wanted Bob wanted to see what they were actually made of and so I'm having a, a sample sent to Bob on that so there's things like that that are ongoing okay well <clears throat> um, I'm gonna let Bob um, comment on anything uh, or if he has any concerns, but just for the benefit of the rest of the committee, uh, I had just, you know, kind of coaxed Jeff and Gene along to um, not going into too much detail on some of the things that we've already had a pretty detailed presentation on, um, including the HVAC. And personally, I just didn't think any of us really would have any input on the fire protection. So if I was wrong, you're certainly, uh, can ask questions uh, here or in the next meetings, or if you look at any of the drawings for the next phase. Um, but that's kind of where where I was coming from on that. Uh, so thank you, Jeff. But Bob, if you're happy, uh, I'm happy. But if if you're not, uh, we'd want to hear about it. Um, no, we had a very good working group meeting. Um, questions that kind of came up along the way were answered pretty well. Um, I like the choices that are there. 
Um, they've taken into consideration some of the concerns and some areas that we're going to touch back on. But hey, overall, it was a good meeting, and um, I think it was uh, well covered. So I think we're good. Okay, great. Do we, does anybody on the committee have any questions specific to those two items, the HVAC or the fire protection? All right. Any, <clears throat> so that, I guess that's it for the designer update then, Jeff, otherwise, right? I think that it is. Um, we sort of touched base uh, with the, um, my, what I call the design committee or finish committee. I sort of call it the design committee because I think of us as a team, you know, both sides of the table there. And so uh, we'll have we'll be having our working meetings going forward. Uh, we've invited uh, someone else to the uh, working uh, uh, finish uh, meeting uh, for this Thursday, and uh, and then from there we'll have a, probably a couple of weeks before we have our next one. But uh, as we go forward, we're going to talk about not only the interiors but the exteriors also. Okay. Um, I know some of the things the committee will be interested in, um, you know, we touched on it last week on the presentation that was done on the color scheme, the exterior, um, how we were going to roll in the history um, of uh, George Mitchell. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking for ideas on how we can keep the committee involved in some of those things uh, going forward. Um, I know the, the nuts and bolts of the things are really being done with all the hard work that the administration and, and others are doing um, in between all these meetings, but you know, I just want to open it up to any suggestions from the design team, Shane, or any questions or suggestions from the committee going forward because um, honing these meeting agendas down to the things the committee really wants to hear and have input on, I think is going to be important as we move forward, especially because there's going to be so much detail coming at us, you know, it could overwhelm us. So I want to open it up to that topic uh, for anybody who wants to uh, talk about it or comment on it. It's got to be somebody. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I would just say that um, when we get into the, um, interiors, the colors, the, you know, uh, kind of bringing the theme into, into three dimensions uh, that will, I, I think we continue under the same path in which we work with this um, kind of specialized group or the people that have interest in it. And um, we kind of form what we think is, is good and then we bring it to the building committee. And I think John at that point if we're getting in, I don't think we'll get into too much detail because I think people enjoy it. But you know, you'll just oh, have yeah. to, you'll have to modulate us if we uh, if we start getting into the weeds. Okay. All right, and I guess for others, I would just encourage you to speak up, um, whether it's at the meeting or in between the meetings. Um, you know, we have a very transparent team here, so. There shouldn't be any shortage of opportunities to participate or be kept informed, you know, outside of the context of the meetings. John, can I just ask one question to um, Gene? Sure. Gene, so all along we've seen this gray building. Are you getting away from the gray building and going? I know at the last meeting at the very end we saw the red brick. Is that the direction you're headed in now or are we sticking with the gray brick or where are we with that at this point? Um, I don't I don't really want to promise either because the thing about a light colored brick um, especially for you know younger kids is it's a little less um, heavy a little less imposing um, so that's why we had initially shown it we were trying to soften the building a little bit um, but I know that Steve from our office was starting to explore the the red, you know, once he kind of went with this vertical um, theme on the outside, um, that kind of popped up. 
but I, but I do have to say that we haven't had a lot of meetings internally here about the exterior of the building. We really kind of got wrapped up on um, the, you know, the theme of the building and the interiors, because typically that's where MSBA wants, wants to talk about it. You know, a brick building is kind of a brick building and um, they think that the personality of the building kind of is more interior where all the people are and, and kind of making it comfortable for the small kids. So that's a, that's a big run on sentence, Pat. Um, I just don't want to commit either way because we haven't really come to a conclusion of what we think we'd like to suggest. Um, and then whatever we suggest, I guess, gets vetted through this small working group and then eventually gets vetted through you guys, the whole committee. Okay, and then just one quick question. Is that, is that a picture of Matt Rushton or has he really been smiling the whole meeting? <laughs> <laughs> I've been smiling the entire time. I'm not really at the library. You need that thing like they have on TV where just it's a, it's a still picture but the mouth moves? <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that yet. So Gene, yeah, if I can, John. Sure. So, so, so with those finishes, we're obviously we're going to go to to estimating uh, this week. Um, you know, if if there are changes during the ninety percent, will, will we have time to to make those changes and and you know vet out the costs if there are any? Oh, I I definitely think so, Shane. I I, I mean I definitely do because right after we work through the interiors, I mean we need we need to start working on the exteriors too, but. Like you said, it's the whole, it's really almost the whole month of May, June, July, and August. Um, so, I mean, I'm comfortable. We have plenty of time and that we're flexible enough. I mean, the more the drawings get completed, it just frees up uh, man hours. So if we do decide to make some sort of change due to budget, um, you know, we'll have plenty of people to, uh, to implement it. All right, thanks. Okay, so I guess that that would end that uh, the designer update. Unless anybody has any other questions, we would move on to the report of the communication group. Uh, the only thing we have is we are working on updating the website with presentations. Um, now that the information has come in fast and furious for us, we'll be posting those things. Um, meeting agendas and minutes will be posted as well. Other than that, that is where we stand. Um, I did want to circle back with you, Shane, though, on my question last last time we met about pub notification of abutters. And um, is that something we need to, do we need to create a page on the website specifically dedicated to abutters? Should we create a separate, I, I'm, less inclined to create a separate web page for butters but right well i, I wouldn't yeah i think I, I spoke to christina and she said she had, she'd been talking to to lil and yourself mike um i i wouldn't create a specific page just to a butters right if we create a page it should be to to all of bridgewater okay um you know we can we can do that and use that as sort of our 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 means of getting notifications out and information out to 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 folks. Uh, you know, I asked Christine about you know should we be sending you know a physical letter to people's mailboxes and and she was going to talk to to you and Lil I think about that again, um, or whether we just do it through the website. Uh, so I, I I I don't think that's been been finalized or decided yet. Okay. Then I don't have anything else. Tad, uh, Lil, Pat, uh, Scott's not on, is he? No. Uh, do you guys have anything to add? No, just waiting to hear back from Christina and setting up a meeting so that we can discuss that.
We wait. That's it. I'm, nothing. I'm, I'm all set, Mike. The only thing I'd say is that maybe something as simple. I saw the Community and Economic Development Committee just uh, department just put out a notification today about streetlights and how there'll be work going on around town between now and July 1st. And that, I mean, that seemed to work pretty well. I saw it right away. It, so I, maybe something as simple as that to notify people in town when work's starting, have that department or a department just shoot out a, a, an email like they did, they did for that. Can you, um, Pat, off offline we'll chat, but can you um, forward me that email? Yeah, I don't know if it was on the town website or how it came to my phone, or I might sign up for notifications, okay. but it, it maybe Michael that that knows about it. It it came a letter came from CED today saying that okay. the streetlight project starting this week there'll be streetlight construction from now to July first, you know, throughout the town and they're replacing fourteen hundred lights. I mean maybe something as simple as that from a department in town that they could send that out, you know, and then I, I agree with Shane. Trying to notify everybody all the time that could be a problem. So this John, is Kathy. I, I got that to it. I think it was because we signed up for a notification. Yeah, if I, I I can just shed a little light on that. It is you do get those notifications because you've signed up through the website for either text notification or email notification. Um, our experience. Um, when we do projects, especially projects similar to this, but more more uh, precisely road projects, um, doing some kind of notification, even if it's um, hanging a a, uh, a flyer on somebody's door, um, is enormously helpful. Um, I, I'm going to hazard to guess that a lot of the abutters to the site <clears throat> or down on South Street um, are not folks that regularly you know get online or certainly folks that look at the the town's website uh or have signed up for notifications so just even though they're you know sending something through the mail right now you know sometimes can um present its own problems i do think as we get closer to the actual demo date it would be helpful to send out something you know, we, we can certainly run the abutters list, but it'd be very helpful to send something out and at least let people know roughly what the dates are going to be and roughly what to expect um, in terms of the demo process. Um, again, you know, my experience is if you leave it to a website posting, you know, maybe 5% of the people that really are going to be affected will see it. So, so it, uh, it's really worth the aggravation um, to just send it out, you know, send out a, a letter or some something in paper form. Uh, and obviously we can run the abutters list and run the envelopes and all that. So, but it is, it is more helpful to get it that way. There in our town, um, when we have periods of construction, the highway department provides a sign um, at one of the main intersections in town and notifies them that way. You know, if they're, if you have a a town sign that has notification of ongoing projects. We, our town feels that that's a good communication thing where it gets a lot more people that way too. Yeah, we've, we've actually already talked about um, doing exactly that. We've got, I think, two, uh, three, four uh, notice boards, um, a few of which are being used right now, um, you know, for this, the COVID thing, but um, absolutely, we'll, we can utilize those as well. We'll continue those conversations. Thanks, folks, offline. Um, we'll work with uh, Michael on getting that list of abutters and um, see what we can do there. Thank you. And that's it, John. Okay, the, <clears throat> the next item is uh, public comment. All right, nothing, Mike. No hands up, no, uh, okay. No, I don't think there's anybody from the public actually on. I was just doing a quick, quick look. All right, thank you. Okay, the next item is approval of the demolition contract award. Um, 
we've talked, you know, in detail about it. So maybe Shane could recap and just tell us what we're voting on and help us form a motion. Sure, yeah. Um, so as I said, this is this is the bid list. We we had the nine bidders. Um, you know, we, we we've reviewed the the bids to make sure all the the required documents were were in there uh, that they they had included the addendum that was issued um, and uh, and Vinagro's bid looks to be looks to me a uh, a good bid uh, we're well under budget as we said so so we recommend that we we go out to Vinagro uh, and award the, the demo contract to them in the amount of five eighty three zero zero zero. Um, the process is if if the committee approves that tonight we'll we'll issue what's called a a notice of award. Uh, that's a letter that will will tell them that that the committee at their meeting um, approved the, uh, the the bid for the demolition. We'll send that to them together with the uh, with a, a copy of the contract um, and ask them to return that by under under the bidding laws. They're required to return that within ten working days. Uh, together with their insurances and a bond for the project, a performance and payment bond for the project in, in the amount of 100% uh, of the bid value. Uh, once we get that, we then, uh, we then execute the contract and we can issue a notice to proceed to them. When we issue the notice to proceed to them, we, we, we give them 10 days to, uh, to mobilize, start on site and, uh, and continue with the work then on, under the contract terms and the, the, the schedule is outlined in the contract. Okay, does anybody have any questions on that procedure? What's gonna happen uh, once we take this vote? All right, so I guess we would need a motion. What to, um, how should we word it, Shane? To, to award the, the demolition of the, the George Mitchell Elementary School to J.R. Vinagro uh, based on their bid of April 29th in the amount of $583,000. So well, John, you want me to make that motion? Yes, please. So I'll make the motion to award the uh, demolition contract uh, based on the results of uh, 429-2020 to J.R. Vinagro Corporation in the amount of $583,000. I'll second. Okay, Shane, you state your name when you make the motion and if it's uh, whoever seconds it uh, this also so Pat made the motion and Mark seconded All right, I'm going to take a roll call vote give me just a moment All right John aye Michael Dolan aye Patrick uh, yes. Lillian? Aye. Mark? Yes. Kathy? Aye. Joe? Aye. Michael? Aye. Matt? Yes. Harsh? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, I want to thank um, Shane and uh, RDA for the package they put together. Uh, it's always nice when things come in under under budget, um, but seeing their bid response and how close some of those were together, um, usually an indication that uh, it's a good set of plans and it was uh, clear for the bidders. So thank you. All right, the next item is approval of the previous minutes from April 27th. Kathy, motion to approve. 
Matthew um, second. Okay, I'm going to take a roll call vote. John? Aye. Michael Dolan? Aye. Patrick? Yes. Lillian? Yes. Yeah. Mark? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Michael? Yes. Matt? Yes. Harsh. And this is Harsh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Um... <clears throat> So the next meeting uh, we we mentioned is scheduled for June first. Yes, so I'm not sure if if there's anything. So we'll we'll, we'll get those sixty percent documents to the estimators hopefully by by the end of this week, um, and we'll be back on June first with with reconciled estimates. I'm not sure if there's anything else, Gene, that that you or or Jeff or your team have to present before before June 1st? No, we're, we're, we're all about pulling together the uh, CD60 submission for June 5th, so. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff. The two things that we have to hit are the, the cost estimate set, which is due at the end of this week, and then, uh, yes, then on June 5th uh, to MSBA, the 6%. So we'll be busy. Yeah, so I think, I think those, uh, those three and a half hour meetings we've had over the last two months, we've, we've covered everything and we get to, to take a little break now while, while the, the designers go to work. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. So um, I, you're going to make that available to the committee, a download or whatever, like you did last time. So we have a opportunity to look at what's going to the estimators. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion on the upcoming meeting for the first? All right. Uh, Item 11 is additional committee discussion, if there is any. Well, I just want to thank everybody for all the continued work that, that's uh, taking place and moving things along right on schedule. I think it's great. John, sorry, it's Mike. I was talking and I was on mute. I apologize. It looks like that some folks have joined the meeting late. So I didn't know if, I know we went, we passed public comment already. I didn't know if they were joining for that reason or not. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, how do we address Just them? noticed a couple of uh, new, uh, new names there. Uh, Josh, I didn't know if you had any, um, I actually don't see Josh. Did we lose Josh? Nope, I'm still here. Yeah, I see him. Oh. Um, okay. uh, I wasn't sure if uh, the two <coughs> folks that are not on the committee wanted to talk or if, how they came into the meeting. No comment here. Okay. And I think no comment. Questions. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that it's, I thought they joined late, John. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for noticing that. Okay, that was it then. Great. Thanks for having us. Uh, I guess we need a motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. This is Mike, motion to adjourn. Matt, second. I'll just say at the outset, for attorneys looking at this information, we really watch for the language from... Okay, so I'm just going to take a roll call vote. Uh, John? Aye. Michael Dolan? Aye. Patrick? Patrick? Yes. Lillian? Lawyers, yeah. when you look at that, you know, that's, that's, it's helpful to a degree, but the words that we would...
Uh, Lillian? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Mark? Yes. Joe? Yes. Michael? Yes. Matt? Yes. Harsh? Yes. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Be safe and well. Thank you. Thank Good night. you. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night.